senior in high school and I'm touring the University of Pennsylvania today. Even though I haven't gotten my decision yet, this is one of my top choices. So I'm bringing you along with me. So actually this entire thing is College Hall and only the West Wing is under construction. So this is where undergrad office, presidential office, classrooms are. It does definitely look like Adam's family type stuff. And then I'm standing on uh, the green with the button. It's a pretty cool button. <laughs> it's really pretty. This is the first time I've seen a homeless person on a college campus though, because usually you see them in cities and stuff and that's nothing special, but I just saw one on a bench, which I've never seen before. This is the visitor center. They're closed. This is Houston Hall. It's the center of most of the recreational and dining stuff on campus, I think. Right. Irvine Auditorium. We're now headed to the Fisher Fine Arts Library, which is behind the auditorium. A lot of squirrels here. Whoa. Oh, my oh there's a black squirrel. Oh, they're chasing, they're going somewhere. This is the pen sign. I have no idea what it means, but that's, that's it. So that's the back of the auditorium. And apparently every Halloween they play a like historic horror film in there. And then they also house a bunch of famous speakers and student performances. All I know is Michelle Obama spoke in there once, but that's the extent of the people I know. This is the Fisher Fine Arts Library, right across from the auditorium. The library has so many windows, and apparently it's a good spot to study because it's quiet or something. This is the School of Design. It looks a little bit like an asylum. And this is the library again. It's really pretty. Oh yeah, this is like the prettiest library I've ever seen. No. Famous architect, I don't know who it is. It's, uh, his name is uh, Frank Furness. And Frank Furness designed the library. It's one of the <laughs> most distinctive buildings. You can only go inside during business hours. Once again, the library is closed. I don't know what this button is, but it's, it's pretty cool. 10 out of 10 button, good button. Right in front of the button, or behind the button, is the Van Pelt Library. Just to, just to get your bearings, College Hall, Fine Arts Library, Irvine Auditorium is there. That's the School of Design, Van Pelt Library, and we're standing on the green right now. This is what I was talking about. It's like proprietary or something. That's gonna be me. Center for Special Collections, Rare Books, and Manuscript. I guess Penn doesn't use Oxford commas. This is and we can't go in here, but it looks like old stuff. It's called the Lea Lee Lea Library. This campus feels very much like other Ivies. It's very studio. Oh, whoa. I really like their general, like, their fonts and stuff are really cool. Their kind of design aesthetic is really nice. This is called the Arch Building. It stands for Arts Research and Culture House. 
I think it's pretty much the home of just like any kind of research that you want to do. There are cool doors right there. Yeah, it's home to the Center for Undergraduate Research. This is the Locust Walk. It's kind of just like the, the highway for foot traffic inside of the college campus. I guess the college comes with really cute dogs. Uh -huh. So that big looming thing is called Huntsman Hall. And that's what houses the Warden, oh, Wharton School of Business, which is where I applied. And it's right there. So this is, this is Huntsman Hall. And then across that bridge is a bunch of apartments and stuff where you can live, I guess like on campus still, but it's, it's separate apartments and not dorms. It's called the High Rise Apartment. Apart resident, high rise of residence. Look at this school, this is so cool. You know, Penn admission officer, if you're watching this, you know, I, I really want to go here. There's the high rise residency or whatever. But uh, this is the bridge that goes over 39th Street, I think. Everyone has the same lamp. I think these are all student residences. This is a very nice bridge, 10 out of 10 bridge. I would cross it many times. Just let me come. Yeah, please, please let me come here. <laughs> the campus is like right embedded inside of Philadelphia and there's all of these shops and even a physical therapy place down there. So that's pretty nice. And then right across the street from, I think the library or the school of design, there's this uh, food hall. I thought the Philadelphia tour was at three o'clock, but it was at two o'clock. So we are currently driving over in a hurried fashion. So this used to be where all the government happened. And this was where the executive branch was. Two houses of Congress on the top and bottom. And then that was where they shared the city hall with the judicial branch. This is the American Philosophical Society, whatever building, uh, founded by Ben Franklin. Our tour guide says that that little patch of weeds over there was the first medical school in America. It's like 20 feet by 20 feet. Yeah. Yeah, they replaced the important stuff with weeds that got torn down. That's the first bank of the United States. Brainchild of who? Forgot. Alexander Hamilton, a Federalist. Go Federalists. Federalists made America what it is today because they made the government really big, but now it's a little too big. Go Federalists, but not right now. These are in commemoration of Ben Franklin's house. And this is what the neighborhood would have looked like. And this is the original archway. What do you think? I think the, the college is nice. It's very nice. I can't like see myself there. But, like I wouldn't mind being there at all. Like I can't picture myself living there. You can. I can't. You can't. But like I want to go there though. I don't know if that makes sense. I could see myself at Princeton. We got Buffalo Wings cheese there. But like, I wouldn't mind going here either. But it's very nice. And then the city all around, like, I don't think I'll ever get bored. There's so much stuff to do. And like, everything that you see has some kind of significance. Yeah, that's cool. Having the history along with the city, that's... Yeah. So Penn was founded by Benjamin Franklin, who basically founded the entire Philadelphia area. His name and likeness is plastered on the walls everywhere and he was a genius not just because he knew so much and he was like kind of a modern renaissance man but also because everything he learned he taught himself basically and he didn't keep it to himself either so all of the things that he knew how to do he would spread with others and his entire life was devoted to making lives of other people better which is why he never patented any of his inventions or anything like that and so it's in that spirit that he founded UPenn so that 
the common man might be able to get that same level of education, which, by the way, led to his receiving many honorary degrees from Harvard and one other, one or one or two other colleges, as well as an honorary doctorate from Oxford. And so, yeah, he wanted to spread that knowledge so that the common man could receive it for a cheaper price, which is why he created UPenn. And I think the reason that our country is in so much turmoil is because we've strayed from that a little bit. And now a lot of people come to college to get a degree in fame and status and money and wealth in, as opposed to knowledge that might be able to help others and better ourselves as a society. And also the Penn, UPenn's mascot is the Quakers and our tour guide was saying that the Quakers wouldn't even name anything after themselves because they thought it was putting themselves above God or above each other, which was a big no-no. And even just the mascot of Penn, I think is a symbol for what it stands for. And I think it would be really beneficial for our country if we turned back to what Ben Franklin stood for and what our founding fathers in general stood for. And we united together to create this pool of knowledge that could mutually benefit all of us. And in that way, by uniting together rather than dividing, I think we would be able to prosper and flourish as a country and race rather than tear each other to shreds. And I think that UPenn is where that can start. Why still? Yeah, it's really good. How about you? Good.